Welcome to today's lecture. We're gonna cover the most dangerous of all modes. What was that? Uh, anyway, it's a uh, manual mode. Oh. Uh, so why is manual mode the most dangerous mode? Well, you'd think it'd be the favorite mode for photographers, especially those of us that grew up in the film era. And, you know, none of the cameras had any uh, meters in them earlier. Those older cameras didn't have any electronic functions at all, really. They had mechanical shutters and there were so many things lacking that we have now we just take for granted in DSLRs. So for those of you that grew up in the film era uh, with some bit of nostalgia, uh, manual mode is really for you. But if you didn't grow up in the film era and you had no experience with manual cameras, I think that you're going to find the manual mode to be challenging, but I think you're gonna see a lot of upside. Let me just describe briefly the difference between manual mode and what I consider to be the auto-assisted modes that we've talked about, which are aperture priority, shutter priority, uh, and then the sports mode, the portrait mode. Uh, the sunset mode, the night photography mode, all of those modes have an automatic exposure control element. So the camera generally sets the exposure for you. And that is why it's so important to get a mastery over manual because you're going to find yourself in situations quite often with those auto-assisted modes where you, you can't seem to get a proper exposure, especially backlit subjects. And with manual, you can just override that. You can look at your subject and you can say, that subject's face is just too dark. I need to uh, adjust it. And then you can take another shot, look at it. Oh, that's improved. Maybe I could go a little farther and adjust it again. And manual mode allows you to do that. There's a special reason why manual mode is the last mode that I cover in this part of our class. And that is that manual mode uh, doesn't care <laughs> if you drive off a cliff with your exposure. It just sits silently by and takes your commands. So in aperture mode, you don't like the shot. You think, oh, that's too dark. And you change the aperture to make it wider and let more light in. But in aperture mode, it's auto-assisted. So what happens is the camera says, oh, we're opening up more light. I have to speed the shutter up. The camera does that to you, and manual mode will not allow that to happen. You make the decision. You look at a shot and you go, that's too dark. I'm gonna open up to a bigger aperture, and the camera goes, okay, you know, let, let him do that. And then you, you will be able to lighten the, your image without any interference with the camera trying to compensate with a faster shutter speed, for example. Once we understand how manual mode works, uh, it will help us get good shots in situations that completely confound our cameras. Situations where auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, and others just will fail over and over again. And I'm willing to bet, once you get some mastery of manual, it will be your friend. You'll be able to depend on it and you'll be able to do a lot of things with it that you wouldn't be able to do in all of those other uh, auto-assisted modes. So I want to give you an example of what I mean by auto-assisted and totally manual. So imagine there's an exciting car chase that's done with self-driving cars by the police and the outlaw pulls out away from the curb and then just takes off at high speed and the police car tries to follow but the cop car says you're speeding I will slow down or you're getting too close to that parked car and I will take an alternative route that has a wider street and the cop is going oh I need to chase this car in order to catch the outlaw but the auto driving police car saying oh no 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 uh, I know better and so you can imagine, you know, the consternation and, and, you know, the cop could be trying to override it and finally the car will go, oh, I'm pulling over because your decisions are illogical. Well, 
You know, the cop car should be manually operated, right? And so should your camera in these various situations. So you can make the decision about how much light, how little light, what shutter speed you want, what ISO level you want, what your white balance is, all of those. Once you gain a mastery of the manual mode, your photographs will be so much better than the mindless point and shoot photographers that are out there and that many of you may have been before this class started because just lifting a camera up to your eye and just pointing it and not thinking about the technical end of how the light is affecting the sensor and how you can improve that exposure that just that you know if you're just going to continue to do that there's no reason to take this course we really need to gain some mastery over our cameras and those previous modes are a really good step, but the manual mode is essential. Okay, let's get uh, acquainted with the manual mode by taking a series of three photographs of the same scene. We could choose an easy scene that any camera can deal with in the auto mode, but that isn't going to show you how the auto mode fails and how the manual mode can improve it. We need to find a difficult lighting situation. And I'm going to choose a difficult situation that would be a backlit situation. Because in this situation, auto mode and all of the other modes tend to uh, leave the subject a little too dark. The result is a subject that is a dark silhouette. And that's okay for one shot. And you want to override that so the background will be overexposed. So what you need to do is bracket your exposures. So I'm switching to manual mode and my display will show the exposure scale as being way out of whack. I mean, manual mode just goes to the last exposure that you had uh, the last time you were in manual. You might have been in a completely different situation than you're presented with now. So because uh, the camera doesn't automatically adjust the exposure, it's not adjusting to a new exposure, you have to uh, tell it what to do in every new situation. So in this situation, the exposure indicator is far into the plus area, and that's going to create massive overexposure, washing everything out. Let's begin by adjusting the exposure indicator to the middle position. And this takes the camera's advice for the settings. In other words, the camera says, to set it at this particular combination of aperture and shutter. And so you say, I agree with that. And you set that indicator into the middle position. The result will not be much different than auto when you do this setting in the mid position. Now I'm going to lighten the exposure by using my thumb wheel to choose a larger aperture. This lets in more light and gives me detail in the subject. And you'll see that the background becomes overexposed when I do this, but the subject itself, which was too dark when I had the exposure indicator midway, uh, but when I went to the plus side, when I started letting in more light, the background burns up, but the subject becomes better illuminated. And that's what we want. The camera in auto or aperture or shutter priority, it would be underexposing uh, our subject. and. And we can see that using manual, change it to the plus side, and I will let in more light. And that corrects that problem. Only manual will give you that kind of control. So taking a series of exposures of the same subject, that's called bracketing. That's uh, an underexposure shot, uh, what the camera considers to be normal, and then an overexposure shot. And typically in difficult lighting situations, bracketing is a very, very smart thing to do because it gives you a choice of exposures to choose from. There are several cameras that will automatically bracket. You can set that. I'm not going to go into that menu setting, but you can look it up in your manual because every camera model is different. So it would you know, it's just a waste of time to go over what my camera does. But uh, there are settings that you just one click of the shutter and bang, 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 and it gives you three brackets or five brackets or whatever. 
So for the first part of our exposure assignment in manual, I want you to show me the underexposed, what your camera thought was the normal exposed, and then the overexposed. And uh, that will give you an idea about how your camera is performing. So put three, those three brackets on one screen. That's the first part of the assignment. Okay, the next part of the assignment is to be done at night. Uh, and this is a situation where your auto-assisted exposures are uh, very poor performers. Uh, I want you to have a location that has a lot of lights in it, uh, whether they're house lights or neon signs or um, a lot of street lamps. A good location for this is actually uh, taking storefronts in the parking lot of a shopping center. That's something that you can do uh, pretty easily and uh, you can set up a tripod and you know just stay out of the path of pedestrian traffic but it's a good location for this assignment and again you're going to do your let's do our first exposure by putting the exposure indicator in the mid setting taking the cameras advice for what uh, it should be exposing and then we're going to do one that is on the plus side uh, and just one stop on the plus side and then we're going to go to the uh, negative side and do minus one. Uh, now what happens in situations where there's a lot of signage, neon signage and that kind of thing, they usually are washed out. The camera is trying to overexpose there to get detail in the background. We don't want that. So that's a situation where you're gonna find that when you go to the negative, like negative one or negative one and a half or even negative two, that's when you're gonna get your better exposures. And as before, we're gonna show a bracket of three different exposures on one screen. And make sure you label those as to what your exposures were. Take notes uh, so you can label them. I remind you for these long nighttime exposures, you must have a tripod or have your camera set on something where it is completely immobile. Uh, it is possible to do these night shots by setting your camera on a table or like a really flat rock or a square fence post. Um, but what happens is you just click the shutter and you move the camera immediately and then you get part of a blur. So if you're not going to use a tripod and you're going to set it on a fence post or something like that, I recommend that you set the self timer at two seconds. Let's two second delay so you can press the shutter and then it after two seconds it'll fire and by that time you have your hands off of the camera. You know there's a lot more to cover in the manual mode. Uh, but I don't want to overwhelm you, so this is just to get us started. Let's review what is expected in this manual mode assignment. You will turn in two screens. Each one will have three photos on them. Screen one will have three photos of an identical scene placed onto one screen. The subject should have a very bright background. The three shots will include an underexposed photo with the exposure indicator at minus one, a medium exposed image with the exposure indicator right in the middle of the scale, and an overexposure with the indicator at plus one. Screen two is a similar set. It's a bracket. It'll have three different exposures. One will be um, minus one on the scale, one will be normal and one will be plus one on the scale and they're going to be all on one screen. So this is a challenging assignment. It takes some doing and also uh, putting the images onto one screen uh, will be challenging for you. So I'm going to have a separate module, a very quick module that shows how to do that in PowerPoint. Okay, good luck.